Hi and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tony and I'm building another Armatech Monte 6 scale tank. It's the M26 Pershing. If you've been following me, you've been following the journey from the very start from my unboxed it. Um, now, today's session is all about uh, this, this top section of the hull. Um, and then I'm going to go on and start doing the assembly of all the various grills, which I understand that these are going to be quite monotonous. So I'd definitely be speeding that part up. But looking forward to this with a little bit of apprehension because i um, not sure what I'm about to embark on and uh, what I'm about to discover. But as always, it's all part of the journey. So I've gone ahead and got all my components ready for the assembly, all my fixings, not many fixings on this particular part. Um, just, I think it's three bolts um, and the spacers and a few nuts um, and then the bag of bits and pieces for these uh, filler caps here. So um, it's gonna be strange because as soon as it starts going onto the tank, it's gonna really start taking shape and having a different um, aspect about the, the way the tank looks. Um, and I still haven't installed the motors yet, and I will not install those un un unless I feel I I I'm going to be hindered. So I'm going to assemble this, then test fit it onto the tank, and then if I feel that I need to install the motors at that stage, I will. Um, and the only reason I'm holding back is I don't have the batteries yet to test these. But again, like I said in my last video, I'm pretty sure that they test these in the factory before they come out. And, you know, there's just a little bit of apprehension about whether I should fit them before I test them. But I'll make that decision um, during the course of this, this session today. Um, so I will reset the camera. Um, we'll come close in. Um, the t as you know, the tank's off the bench now. So I've got the full bench to be able to assemble this part of it. Um, and then we'll go on and install it on the tank or test fit it onto the tank. So um, I'll reset the camera, we'll get right into it and I'll build this in real time with you. So that's all the parts ready, unpacked. Um, I've already cleaned these up. Um, they will need cleaning before painting, but it just makes it easier for handling. Um, I've already put one of the little filler caps um, in on already just to see what the process was involved in that and i'll go through the next one with you guys in real time because it's, it's interesting there's a few things that they haven't mentioned in the instructions which i think is a bit odd but um but, you know, nothing that we can't get around and um just a bit of thinking and i'll show you how um i address that so i'll do now is i'll just zoom the camera in excuse me i'm just going to zoom that in so we've got this little filler cap piece here and we've got these two pieces that go across the section of that um, and that is what we're trying to achieve which is this thing here um, and as always um, there's a little bit of work to be done because one of these goes in nice and easy but the other one doesn't and it, they're both the same size pieces of steel um, this is aluminium this is steel so I think what I've got to do is it'd be easier for me to work with the aluminium side rather than trying to so i'm just going to file that down a bit these are all the joys of building a kit like that or this i should say i'll just we'll, we'll keep trying that until it slots in it needs to be snug i guess i mean it's going in a little bit better now so we'll get in there i'll do the other side I mean, it wouldn't be any fun if you didn't have to do this sort of thing Just see, so that one goes in all right. Now these are just glued in, and that goes in there, it's fine. Um, all right, and it will need a bit of encouragement with my my trusty mallet. Um, a few of you commented on that. Um, so got the glue ready. Give me reading glasses on so I can see what I'm actually doing. So I'm just going to put um, a little bit of actually just noticed. I didn't get in and clean the recesses of um, of this, so I'm just going to do that now. You want that to be clean, so it gets good adhesion with the with the glue. That's that's better. Little faux pas there. Let's just drive that out. Make sure when you're doing one of these kits, you get some nice, good quality. Uh, metal cleaning wipes, which is what I've got here, and a bit of poly roll. Uh, works wonders. Poly roll or kitchen roll, whatever you guys call it. So that's that, that's dry. So we can now just drop a little bit of, hope you can see that, a little bit of glue into the trough side of that. And it will spread. So that's that. 
these then go in with a bit of encouragement sorry about the noise now this is the way I'm doing it so that's that and then you have these little hinges that fix to the tank or the top of this section here and now there's no mention of um, uh, how you fix these to the main plate um, there's no mention of nuts or anything so it has to be nuts because this is this is threaded on that side and it takes an M4 nut and you get a bag of M4 nuts so although it hasn't mentioned it here it can only be that can only be the way to do it now also these um, I want to put I'm going to put these onto this first with the pin through and then locate it onto the deck so I think it's going to be a little bit easier so this is an, an, a 12 mil M3 pin that goes through the hinge like so and then passes through this little knuckle and then so I'm just thinking it'll be a lot easier for me to work this through on my bench just going to use the edge of the bench I don't want to push that all the way through because I want this hopefully you can see that I'm going to hold that and that's gone in it's gone in there lovely now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push that back out a little bit I don't want it working itself loose I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on that where that recess is and then push that back through to pick the glue up and then because I want that pin to be locked but I want this to you know this needs to spin but actually it doesn't really have it has no actual function on the tank as you'll see although it's nicely put together and it's got this you know articulated uh, knuckle hinge it serves no purpose to the tank whatsoever so that's the first one in let's get gonna get another pin now this pin is a bit of an angled pin I don't know if you can see that and this is supposed to go in um, and I guess act as if it's a handle uh, so that's what it does so this little knuckle again go, comes into play just position that see if that goes in without too much problems this is a bit thicker than the other pin again when the camera's on I don't know what it is every oh there we go it's starting to go in there now there we go and that's it now there's there's a left and a right-handed version of this I've already put the if you like the one side on you can see that this handle is in this position whereas this handle on this side apparently is in that position um, I don't think it really matters I really don't think it matters um, anyway so we'll do that uh, I'm just seeing that it's actually the other way around of course it is Tony there we go no harm done just odd just odd um, and so now we've got these in here like that we can offer those through the two holes hold them into position flip that round that's what I mean there's no there's no mention on the instructions about how you fix these well I certainly can't see it on there uh, so I've just assumed we put an M4 nut on the back of that and
What's that done? And that's that. So they're both on. Left and right. They do nothing. They you know, they're just decorative. They they're not functional. Although they they can they could be functional. I mean, I don't see why there couldn't have been a hole underneath here. So possibly to get access to uh, you know fill it, a smoke filler or something like that but but they they serve no function whatsoever it's just a detail so we'll move on now to the next part okay so the next part is to just install the long 60 mil threaded bolts on the inner ring of this ball bearing ring to really smart detail um, now there are three of these to go in um, and they don't, they're not that clear on the instructions, but when you flip this over, um, you can see there's some countersunk. There's three countersunk points. Now, I can only presume that that's where you're intended to put these bolts. And you get a spacer, a long 60 mil bolt and a spacer. And basically thread that through the spacer, through the hole, turn it round and take a, an M4 nut. And then just spin this on. And then I'm going to just put a little bit of thread locker on. Excuse me while I just take this out of camera. On that, hand wind that in. Hold this on that side and then tighten up from the other side. So that's in. And they remember they did go on the inner ring. So this, these are going to be eventually what effectively um, you locate the the main turret onto. So again, we've got this put this countersunk point here, which again I can only assume they've intended for this. I mean I hope I'm right, but anyway, uh, as always, we will persevere. And if I am wrong, I'm sure you'll you'll all be screaming at the camera right now, but can't see any other way of doing it. And as I said, there's just no mention of it on the instructions whatsoever. And that's that. That won't sit that way, it'll sit this way, of course. And you can see that that rotates around that. So that's that ring. So the next part of this, this ring needs to be secured to the underside of this frame here. So that'll be positioned to the underside of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut a couple of little mini clamps they're not that strong, but they'll be enough for what I want to do here, just to kind of locate that. Now, it's a bit off-center, but that's about right. Then you have this other ring, which is dressed, um, and you can see that it's got countersink fittings, or countersink holes for fixings on this side. So that will be the side that this has to be um, installed to. So. Um, what we need to do is make sure that this lines up with these holes here. So I'm just going to take that off that. Pop that loosely into position there. It's all very loose at the moment. And then this piece comes on the back of that and marries up so that it locks, it comes tight and meets up to this joint here. So that's the, 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 the basis of it. And then you have um, 20 mil countersunk fixings that go through here. And again, I'm guessing, although they haven't told us, we'll use the corresponding nut um, on the other side of it. So this must be the right way because it's countersunk. These fixings will go in and then we'll carry on from there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take those off, line up everything as it should, pop that first one in, flip that, back, flip that round, Oops. holding 
holding the fixing from the underside. Now I'm going to put all these in a bit, sort of fairly loose and nut and just get that just just hand tight for now. Spin that back round and just do the whole thing again, just lining up all the various holes. Countersunk fixing through that, holding the whole thing again. Uh, it's all a little bit loose and wobbly, but don't worry, it will soon start sort of ridging itself up if that's the right word, firming itself up, and it will feel right. Don't know why they've shortcut the instructions on this. Um, so that's that. Spin that round again. Just hold that. The reason why I keep it all loose is that we want this, we want this, when this comes on here, to marry up exactly in line how it should be. Now, if you fix this solid, you're going to find it difficult to do that. So I'm going to now put the first of these fixings in to hold that. Oh, that looks, oh, bear with me. Yeah, they're all the same. And 420 countersunk just feels wrong because the countersunk is so big on that. So get a nut on that and then it will start feeling right. Again, everything's just, just hand tight for now. This is it. I hope you're finding this useful. This sort of thing, when I was doing the Tiger, I didn't really sort of cover. Um, and I've decided on this tank, I'm going to cover pretty much 100% of the build. Um, because I had a few guys comment previously saying they would have liked to have understood how certain aspects were built or certain parts of it were built. And then the final one for this part, the build just goes in there. Again, just spin that round. Red locker on that. Nut. That's it. All very loosely put together, but that's in essence what we've got. So we'll now just go around and tighten the whole thing up. Um, just make sure I've got the right. Hold that nut underneath. And it was the right one. Yes, it was. <laughs> That's it, just tightening that, making sure that all this lines up still. I'm just holding the nut underneath. Make sure this is all lined up, and that is. Just tighten that one up a bit.
and that's pretty much done. So that's that's pretty much it. Uh, that's operating as it should, and you can now see the principle of that. Uh, as I said, these then will then, as you drop your turret on, um, that really heavy, significant cast piece. Now there's a couple of extra bits to be done to this. Um, there's a bracket that goes on the back of this, um, and I can see that it's, just in case the guys have built this already, I can see that's all lined up perfectly, so I'm going to have no problems putting the cap screws into that. And then we've got the uh, side skirts that basically go on whichever way they go on this side here um, and vice versa the other side so these pieces and then what I'm going to do is I'll just test fit it onto the tank um, uh, before we go any further so just spin this round and this little plate here from what I understand sits underneath it like that and we've got our two 20 mil m3 cap screws or m4 cap screws I should say and they just simply wind into into position what I will do actually is put a drop of thread locker in the holes. Now they say on here, keep this loose until it's all assembled. Well, you know, obviously we're doing that anyway. And as long as you kind of keep an eye on this when you're lining everything up, you know, underneath, it's going to be fine. So I'll just wind these in and probably get the right, without we've got the right size tool. And there we go, that's, that's in there. And that's that one sent home. So that effectively is that. So the next thing really is just a matter of um, uh, fixing these side skirts on. Um, and then test fitting it to the tank. So I'll do that and uh, we'll see how we go. Right, I've zoomed the camera out so you can actually see the whole of this. So these side skirting things have got to go on next. There's only one way they can go on. There's one left hand, one right hand. Um, and there's, there's a ridge, if you like, here, which determines, I think, the height of where it sits and it does, yeah. Um, so what these are fixed in, and we're going to go in um, on the top. So I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there is there is four fixings here, two here, top and bottom, top and bottom. Um, and looking at the instructions, I can see that the target for this is to go on the top ones. So that's going to sit pretty much like that. I'm going to put these in loose for now. I don't want um, to tighten them up because I think as we might need to adjust the height of it when it goes onto the when we test fit it onto the tank. Well, that is awkward. Of course, it would be. I will put thread locker on that at some point, but not for now. I guess in the other two holes are for fixing it into the tank. So, just, well, these are actually easier to get to. In a moment, I'll um, when we're ready to put this on, I'll relocate the camera so you can see the main tank, which is over there on its um, on the table jack at the moment. So that's that in, albeit loosely. Now can I do the same on this side? This is so different to the tiger. So I'm, I'm doing this slowly and methodically so I don't want to make any mistakes and as I said and I keep saying I'm not in any rush I have got um, you know I'm not nowhere near 
ready for bringing this tank to life just yet just it's just a static build um, and I am enjoying it very very much and the comments I'm getting from those of you who are watching and following me um, it seems as that on you know that, that you, you're enjoying the build as well and thank you for continuing to follow me um, so that's that so what we'll do now in a moment I'm just going to reposition the camera and we'll see it on the tank we'll, we'll test fit it on the tank right so the moment of truth um, I'd like to say I've test fitted this but I haven't uh, this is the first time so um, I think obviously it's got a curve on here it's curved here on the tank so it has to go this way I'm going to go front in first wow fits like a glove that's incredible oh my tech well done right so that's that um, now I can see I can tighten these up now because they're in the right position nice and tight so I'll just tighten all these up and I can see why you got the other hole so there's a fixing hole underneath here and here which will fix ultimately end up fixing this to the tank that went better than I thought it's really nice when things like go together so well uh, just you know, hats off to Armatech because um, they are really good I'm not going to fix this on just yet though I'm going to um, I'm going to leave it loose so I can get it off to get to the inside as and when the option packs arrive. I think it doesn't stop me painting it. So yeah, so it won't stop me painting it. And if it goes in and out like that as, as quick as that and as easy as that, can't see any reason why. I would want to fix it just yet. Just like that. And back in again. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Right, on to the next step. Right, so we're now on to the next repetitive part of the build. Um, this is grill A, and you need to build, or we need to build, four identical ones of these. Um, so I've found all the, the components here. Um, some of them need to be straightened out because through the course of packing and and traveling and everything else some of them are a little bit bent out of shape but that's not a problem we can do with that and then these rods here um they're supplied uh and if you're looking for them they'll be inside the barrel so this is the first time i can hear them in there so this is the first time we're going to see the the barrel i'm just going to open this up I'm going to take the barrel out now and I'm so keen to see it. But before we do that, let's just see if that's... There we go. And there are all your little rods. Now, you've got to be really careful of these because they will bend very easily if we're not too... If we're not too... Uh, if we're a bit careless with them. And then that's the end of the barrel of the gun, which, do you know what? I'm going to leave there because that's for another... That's for another day. Uh, so we'll pop that away out of the way for now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to this is going to this is going to be a close-up uh, camera operation so I'm going to go and build one away from camera and then once I've built it and understood all the headaches and challenges around it I will then come back to camera and we'll build one in real time and then we'll speed the whole thing up right so that's one down three to go it, you know, it's it's a simple enough job, but it is tedious as you can imagine, because each one of these little rods that effectively you know create this grill have to be measured and cut, um, 
and then you have to assemble the frame and then snap these snap and well glue and snap these little rods in but the actual the you know the the finished effect is pretty impressive i can imagine that actually uh, looking really smart when it's painted up and put on the tank so this comprises of a frame one of these frames an end piece something like 27 rods across here there's uh, like a i think there's 16 of these with a 100 mil that flank or that you know that go where the hinges are and there's 11 ones that go in the center and then they basically snap well they glue and then snap into place you know quite quite easily but it's fiddly and it's um awkward uh, but you know it is part of the build um so what i'll do now is i will um pop that down there sorry bring in the camera shot and i will build one in real time and then i will do everything else i'll speed up right so um we're going to crack on now and build one of these in real time um i've already gone ahead and cut all the rods to the sizes that i want um to save you that sort of monotonous uh, experience um now there's a couple of things obviously these come uh, in packed in bags and you can see that i don't know if you can see that on the camera but it's got a bit of a bend in it there already um so that needs to be straightened out um and it also tells us that um when you fix the hinge on you use one of these little six mil m3 countersunk screws um, and it says that it must be flush um, because obviously when they're side by side um, they could end up uh, you know clashing with each other these grills so imagine that being sort of there next to it we need to make sure that they don't clash um, however that's impossible to achieve unless we countersunk countersink these holes a little bit more than they currently are and even then what i found on the other one that i built this one here um it's uh you you still need to i still need to machine the edges down just to sort of keep them sort of so, uh, flush as possible so anyway we'll go on and talk about that in a moment so this is um <clears throat> so this is the sort of the main frame very very fragile um it's not going to take a lot of work to uh, to bend that accidentally so just be very very careful of that so i'm going to put that to one side for a moment then have these two little hinges um, and as always these hinges they, there's always uh, work to be done to these um, that needs to be in there but it needs to be you know it needs to move freely and currently it's not it's quite stiff and um, what i don't want so i'm going to rub this i'm going to use my little file just to clean these edges up what i don't want is uh, when it's on the tank and we're operating these because the way the hinge is fixed it's not it's not the greatest detail i'm going to be honest with you armatech um uh, and we need to make sure that these fit nice and loose not that's better uh because when it when it's actually doing its job of hinged hinging or opening um i don't want it to, to pull the frame apart and i'll explain that um a little bit further down the line when we get into that so before you do any of this make sure you clean up these so that you can get a nice loose fitting just make sure that's uh that's nice that's how it should be nice and loose don't you can see that if you have to force this in i would suggest that you need to clean them up so, so that's that for now uh what we'll do is i can actually put the pin in those and, and now we might as well so these are these 20 mil um m3 pins and again these should should be put put these in so they're a reasonable they're straightforward look this goes nice and easy and that's it now what i want to do with that i'm going to use one of these off cuts actually pop that out and then i'm just going to put a little bit of thread locker make sure you put the the two parts together as shown in the you know in the instructions you don't want that the the other way around you want this to be kind of in that orientation <clears throat> so i'm just going to put a little bit of thread locker on that just on this end here before i send that home because they're quite loose they will work themselves free and i'm using thread locker i think it's a better idea rather than super glue because uh, if you ever have to get get them out you can use a you know, hot air gun and that removes that so that's that's that nicely put together I do the same with these um can't remember if i've actually yeah i have done this so that, that moves in there nice and easy again let's 
the right orientation. You just put the pin in that. Just like that. I think that's going to need a little bit of encouragement. Not a lot. There we go. Um, and again, just a little bit of thread locker on this because you want that pin to not not rotate and not fall out but you also want this to be operating freely as it is currently like that so that's that then you have an end piece like this and that goes on the end of this frame but that's obviously secured by means of these six mil m3 fixings one that goes in this side and the other one that goes in this side however as i said these holes are not going to allow my six mil fitting to sit flush so i'm going to just i've, I've got a bit of a jig set up um, away from the camera um, and i'm going to uh, use my countersink tool just to open these up a little bit but don't go mad because you, you still want to have the strength of the metal so i'm just going to open these up a little bit i'll be back in a second So that's it they're opened up now i'm still going to need to use my bench sander to take the head down a little bit of this but um that's the basic principle of it um and as you can see they don't you know they get a little bit bent out of shape so we just need to be careful of that but we can sort that out in a moment so now uh what i would suggest we do with this is we have this back piece here or the back part of the frame that fixes into the hinge in this location here not too concerned about being flush on this so we're just going to pop a little bit of thread locker in there um, and then it's another Sunday and the bikers are out in force I've got the door open in my garage because it's really hot here in the UK. Muggy, hot day. And that's that in there. Um, just needs a little bit more, I think. And what I did on the other one is I just popped a little bit of super glue down that gap there. Let me see that gap. Just so that this whole thing is really quite, you know, loose and um, a bit wayward, if you ask me. So I think it just needs that little bit of glue. Anyway, that's that. Um, now what I'm going to do is we'll put that, we'll position that on this side. This is where this hole needs to align. And you can see it's all a little bit, you know, I think personally they should have had two fixings in this to stop this sort of, you know, if you like, anchoring here or and, and just, you know, creating this sort of pivot point. Um, if it had been two fixings, I think it, it would have got around that. So um, I'm going to pop a little bit of thread locker in that, in that hole. Making sure I've got this orientation the right way these little notches are upwards down the end of that be easier wouldn't it yeah this 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 part all just seems a bit 
Um, compared to the rest of the kit, this all just seems a bit, I don't know, not really well thought out. So apologies, Armatech. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not supporting. I'm not a big supporter of how you've done this. I just think there's probably a better way of doing this. Um, even that's not even going in there properly. But we'll carry on. All right, so I'm back on camera now after having to swear at this a lot. Um, it's the most fiddly, tedious, annoying part of the build so far. So this is the problem I've got here, right? So you've got this hinge, um, and that's going to take a lot of stress. And yet it's it's pivoting like this. Um, and it's to me, it should have had two fixings. But that aside, it is what it is. And you can see, even though I've you know count sunk the hole even more this is still sitting proud so this is going to have to be ground down on my bench so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to apply some super glue although they don't tell you to do this and then just pop that round like that and hope well it seems to work on the other side that that's going to hold that um, in place so to me personally um it just could have been better um i'm not a, i'm not a massive a critic of Armatech at all far from it but on this particular piece I think that the the, the work the workings should have been thought out a little bit better so um, get the next hinge in um, let's hope it's not as fiddly as that one because that was a, a nightmare so um, so we just put this upside down like that I'll put this in first we put a little bit of thread locker in that hole first I think unbelievably and there's four of these today. I've done one. I mean, I did one yesterday, and um, I actually did because I'm filming this over two days, um, and it was a nightmare. I thought we can't. They can't all be that bad, but clearly they are. Um, even these holes aren't clean enough. There we go. And it's just. tortuous so if you're building one of these every if you've gone ahead and you've you've, you've successfully got part this, this pit you know ray and brian and, and to, all these guys out there that have got flying past me i mean good fair play to you mate for getting the patience and to put this together um you know, again see it's just it's all a little bit there's i mean there should have been there's another hole in this there should have been a hole in this perhaps i should have drilled that but it's too late now i'm not going to bother I'm going to rely upon the uh, modern miracle of Loctite to um, secure that in there for me. Just make sure there's enough down there. There is. And let's position that like that. The most frustrating part of the build so far, bar none. I mean, I've looked at the other. I mean, there's more grills to do, and they look even more tedious. I wonder if Armitage just thought, you know what? Uh, we'll uh, we're going to set a real challenge for these guys on this tank. Uh, well, you've done it. Again, that's in there tight, but um, because of this kind of I don't know, this is a weird pivot type thing going on here. This is going to need some trusted uh, Loctite. Just get that to run down using a bit of capillary action. And just tighten that up. And just let that all kind of set before we do any more work to that. As you can see, it's all a bit loose. But that, the glue will do its job, um, and we'll be back momentarily. All right, so I'm back on camera now after having spent a um, good five minutes swearing at this thing. Um, I just find this so unnecessary. The quality of the engineering in these kits is second to none. However, this, I think, is probably... The, the worst piece of engineering um okay so my points are there should be two fixings in here so that you, you prevent this sort of pivoting I issue i think um having to rely upon glue to sort of do the the lion's share of the work 
Now these, because we clean these hinges up here, they're nice and loose, so hopefully there's no stress as, as this opens and closes. Now I think that it's important to make sure that these open and close cleanly because, you know, for at this stage, I don't know, but I think we're going to have to get access to the inner workings of the electronics and everything else in the tank. So anyway, um, really frustrating part, um, and you know, we're only just on the second one of four of these. So that's that. Uh, so the next bit would be you just simply, with these cross members little notches like so they just simply glue in there's no other way of doing it other than to glue so i'm going to just drop a little bit of glue on each one of these notches i'll do two at a time um, and then just pop those in like so I mean, I thought doing the track was tedious, but compared to this, the track was a pleasure to do. I'm putting enough glue so it's running down the inside to sort of make sure that this bonds with um, the full part of this. And that's, that's the easy part of it. So we'll just pop that on there just to let the glue go off a little bit and then we talk about these these rods um, now there are two di there's two dimensions of rods they give you a bunch of these so there's a load of these but bear in mind that this is a very soft aluminium and it will bend so you have to be very careful there is a trick to straightening these out which if I need to I'll show you um, it involves a cordless drill and a vice um, and I'll show you that I mean you destroy probably you know a, a, a sort of one eighth of the length of it but you get it straight um, so anyway these are all all cut to size um, there are 16 at 100 mil and there is 11 at 112 mil um, and all I've done is I've used my cutters and uh, used my bench sander to just clean up the edges so that you don't get that point at the end um, and then I'll just check each one against each other to make sure they're all the same size so pretty happy that that's going to be ready to to work on um, and then we've got so I'm going to start here with the 100 mil take these out of the way I don't need those with the 100 mil um, and they just sit in these grooves let me see that I'm going to try and do this on camera so it makes sense um, they sit in these grooves like so just to try and get an equal space from one end to the other um, now uh, they do snap in but I would also put a little bit of glue so that they don't pop out at any point so the, the first one's quite important to get that in just lining it up on the grooves I'm happy with that and then it, you get this really satisfying little snap and that's in and that's that and we just go again making sure that we mix up the size of the rods. That would be a real faux pas, wouldn't it? Um, so again, as I said, I've gone ahead and cut, pre-cut these, because that's a pain to do. But um, I didn't think you'd be um, interested in seeing that. And all I'm gonna do is just using that to align. And then when you're happy, that just, pops in that really satisfying little snap sound and that's two in I've already put a bit of glue on that one so that's all good and just making sure just doing all this by eye and once they're in they're in and I mean, if you try and get them out, they will bend. So that's that, we'll just carry on. Yeah, I mean, there are certain parts of this build that I've really enjoyed, um, really, really enjoyed. Uh, and this is not one of those parts, but you know, all, all part of the, the journey. I mean, when they're, you know, when they're, um, all painted up now I think they'll look pretty smart but it's easy to forget how painful it was to put them together in the first place 
this bit is actually quite satisfying. Um, it's getting to this stage is the uh, the royal pain. You can see it's all starting to come together. I mean, if I'm making this look easy, that's great, but I'm telling you now, it isn't. So I think what I'll do now is um, I'll probably carry on, but uh, I'll ask my son to speed the whole of this up, including building the remaining two after this. So um, I'm going to speed this up so you don't um, die of boredom. So all four grills are now done. Um, that was a painstaking exercise, I can assure you, but I'm quite pleased how they, they've come out. Um, yeah, they look pretty good. Uh, I think once they're painted, they look really smart. Now, um, another problem. They, they do say on the instructions, they're quite clear that, you know, these need to be countersunk and flush with the frame. But the problem being is that this metal frame is quite thin and the fixings, um, I think, the wrong size. Um, I also talked before about this, this pivoting thing that happens here, which, you know, I think it's a, I'm sorry to say, I'm take a, a, this is not the best of your detailing. Um, and because this is so thin and the fixing so big, it's really difficult. And I did use my countersink tool to open it up even more, but even then you can't do it too much before destroying the frame. I didn't do that, but there was a danger that you could destroy the frame. So, um, I'm going to have to use my bench grinder, and I know that because, I don't know if you can see in the camera, I think it's just about here. I'll put two in, temporarily, um, and I've got them loose, right? But, you can see, can you see that on the camera? Yeah. That's not closing because it's binding, the screws are binding with each other. The other problem is, um, if we put these just back there for now, just put this T-plate in position, just loosely this sits on there nice that's fine but look at that it's not going to shut because the screws are fighting each other so I'm definitely gonna have to grind this down on my bench grinder um, and also the screws on the back here um, are pushing or fighting against the hinge so this is just in there very loosely and that allows me to do that no problem uh, so I'm gonna have to do some work on these so I'm going to start using my bench grinder. Um, ben will probably speed this up because you don't want to hear that noise. But I'm fortunate I have got a bench grinder and I'm hoping that that's going to do the job. So I'll get on with that and I'll come back to camera shortly. Right, so that's all four of those worked. I think that's going to do the job. Um, and I'm just going to, well, what do? Put that in a moment. Um, 
so we'll start putting these back on I'm only putting these on temporarily because I don't want to leave them on while I'm putting the motors in um, so we'll put the first one this side these are 12 mil fixings that go in this side this is the thicker this is the thicker um, armor if you like I'm hoping this has worked binding a little bit on that screw on the back might have to take a bit more of that but um we'll carry on and uh, we'll put the this one on now which is the going to be the eight mil fixings through the thinner plate classic I'm going to be honest with you, I've found this the most frustrating part of the build so far. Something like this, so simple. Just so frustrating. Now they're, they're working, they're working all right, but they're still binding a little bit on the front here. A bit more work to be done, I think. So let's just put that plate on. Yeah, tiny little bit more work to be done just to take the. I'm going to grind off the hinges, or oh, not the hinges, but the screws on the back of this. These ones here, I don't know if you can see that in the camera, because they're actually pushing the frame off. Um, and a little bit more work required. Actually, it's not the it's not the screws binding that; it's the front of these binding. So I might just slacken these off a tad. Don't do any harm to have a little bit of give on them. So I can see that this, this needs to go back in a bit more. So um, a little bit more work to be done. I'll carry on and uh, we'll see how we get on. Right, that's it for today. Um, that was a painful session for me. Um, hopefully not too painful for you. Really frustrating doing these things. Uh, the tedious, monotonous, um, all the words you want to describe. Um, and then they don't fit brilliantly. As you saw, I had to do quite a bit of work on them to grind down the fixings so that they sit reasonably flush. Now, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with the way they're working now. Um, this is all just loosely uh, installed because um, uh, I just wanted to make sure uh, to test fit it. Um, and I'm probably going to do the same when I do these other grills uh, that go on the back. And they look just as much fun. Um, I can't wait to get stuck into those. Uh, but anyway, for now, it's, uh, this is done. I'm pleased it's done. And you can see, actually, look, imagine if, I'd have just, if we'd have just gone ahead and installed this plate. You, how can you get the, the motors? I mean, it's going to be nigh impossible, really awkward to get the motors in. Um, so I'm pleased I've got the motors. I will probably put those in. I'll install those very shortly. Um, so really just to summarize today, it was just really starting to do the, the top hull section um, and these grills uh, and this sort of just, just, this is just temporarily fitted. So I'm going to go on now and do, in the next session, we'll do the other grills um, and uh, pull the rest of my hair out while I'm doing those. And then we'll go ahead and we'll put the motors in and we'll fix all this down and we'll get, we get cracking. And it's really going to start taking shape. Um, and then at some point I may decide to put the tracks and the mud guards on. Still haven't decided that yet. It's a kind of an, a strange build, this, because I don't think you can do it in sequence that Armatech show you. I'm sorry, Armatech, I don't. I think you have to kind of find your way through it. Go ahead and build parts of the, you know, the assembled parts of the tank way ahead of where they show it, because then at least you know you can then test fit it and work out all the problems. But anyway, that's it. Um, if you are continuing to follow me, I really thank you, and, and I really do appreciate that. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and thumbs up, because it means the world to me, um, and it gets my, it boosts my, uh, well, boosts the algor algorithm, is it, or whatever that is. Um, I thought that was a band in the 70s. But anyway, um, thanks again for joining me. I'm Tony, and I'm still trying to build my next tank, the M26 Persian tank, and I'll see you really soon.